So I've noticed this thing, and you even played into this recently on a story, picture, thingamajigger, whatever, on the interwebs. Why in the Sam hell are everybody seeming to put up Christmas decoration and especially lights? Like, I've seen stuff up for a week now. It's not even Thanksgiving, at least when we're recording this, and I'm pissed. I have a firm no decorations until Thanksgiving rule. The reason I broke it this year is because I am driving to Georgia on Friday to get another puppy, and I'm not going to be around to help. I put the tree up, but I did not decorate it, and it's not lit. I plugged it in for the picture, but it's sitting there, and I just wanted it there so it could be decorated by the time I got back. I mean, you got to remember, it's not a party till somebody's lit. Everyone. My name is John Edwards. With me, as always, is Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad's Drink of Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us a part of your day. Well, I had a slight language breakdown recently. Maybe not language, but communication issue, and it, all I can do is laugh at this point. Is this something you should save for a cold open, or do you want to waste it right now? I don't think it's wasting. I, I think it's good content before we you know, dive into some booze. Nobody likes a quickie, man. You want to be that guy. All right, well. So I had the uh, the cleaners over at the rental, and I'm like moving stuff around and whatnot. And the old forester pick was over there, so there's quite a few cases I need to clean out because somebody's actually staying there. And I'm like, hey, don't worry about these boxes. I'll come back and get them later, you know, yada, yada. So one lady like chimes to the other one, says something I'm like, oh, what, did you make a joke? And she's like, well, shit, if you need help with those bottles, you know, let her know. And I was like, oh, well, like, actually, I got some mezcal over here if y'all want some. They're like, huh? I'm like, yeah, mezcal, tequila, it's good. And she's like, oh, okay. So I like sit out about a mezcal on the bar and a couple of blends. You know, be nice. I'll take care of my cleaning folks. They're all gone. <laughs> I came back to the house. <laughs> I can't find any of the three. Did they put the glasses back in the cabinet or did they just take them? Oh, I don't think so. I looked around and like, I don't find a bottle, even an empty one. The glasses are gone. Like, I think they just took it as for the road, like tied one on. <laughs> but these are the people that you use to clean your house all the time, right? Yeah. I mean, they might come back. I don't know. Maybe the glasses I, will come back. I just walked in and I was like, oh, wow. I was just going to like leave a pour for them. <laughs> Have a bottle. Well, you live and you learn. Next time, you better put them in Boston rounds for them. <laughs> that are just like poured ahead of time and be like, all right, well, I'm out of here. Good luck. I'm out of here. I'm taking the bottle. I, I left two glasses for you. Uh, at least I didn't pull them out the chartreuse. I'd have been pissed then. Dude, I've been on that stuff lately. Really? Where'd you find any? Randomly, the last time I was down in you know Spring Hill hanging out with Tark, picking up a few odds and ends. And the only thing I got for myself was the Jack Advent calendar thing. And so I felt bad because it, you know, it was a light load. I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't even get anything for myself here. I hadn't been down in like a month probably. Been busy with everything. And I was going to play golf with Stevie from the bullet pick. He and I, we, we bonded over some chartreuse. So I like see this big, it's in like a big box. I mean, it looks like a yak, but bigger. And I'm like, Tark, it's a chartreuse you got back there. And he's like, oh, this is a cash strength one. Somebody wanted me to order it in for him. And then they haven't come to get it. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to play golf with Stevie tomorrow. Just, just add to the bag. <laughs> What'd you think about it? Dude, you get that stuff cold. I mean, I like it as is. You get it cold, man. Like, uh, prob was like, you got to have it cold, man. It's, it, it just, it makes it even better. It's such a weird back and forth. Like it's very, uh, you know, Annecy kind of reminds me of Jaeger, which I, I like Jaeger, but then there's so much sugar to it. You might as well have a sugar cube in your mouth. It's absurd. So it's like. The bang energy drink of alcohol. Oh, you know, Edwards, like once a month, you come up with something good. You did here, though, buddy. I, I, I'm, I'm, you just want it in little small increments. Like literally, you could probably string out 15 mLs into like five different sips. But it's that sip and it's the palate. And you're just like, oh, I'm intrigued. It's much more than once a month, but thank you. And on this day to give thanks, it is Thanksgiving. I want to say thank you to all of our listeners, Zeke. I want to say thank you for you. I am grateful for you. I think you are the brother that I never wanted. Thank you so much for everything you do. Show up and talk and have me do all the editing. I really do appreciate you. Hey, I've cut down on the ums a lot. You are the best analyst in the game, in my opinion. 
So thank you for your tasting notes that people seem to really like and for generally not being afraid to speak your mind. Hey, one day you're, you're going to say weeder the right way. Cool whip. And- thank you, though. And uh, again, thanks to everyone out there that uh, takes the time to listen to us. Some days I really don't know why, but <laughs> we are thankful of everyone and uh, all the amazing friends and family we've met over the years in the bourbon community. Truly great people all around. A hundred percent agree. We do this more because we love the community. We love the experience. We love hanging out with everyone. And that is why we do what we do. It's not like we're making buttloads of money from this. We're making enough money to keep the lights on. So we're not making any money. money. Well, it all goes (laughs) back into stuff. Equipment, hosting, all of that. I got two dogs. We need to make more money. Yeah, that's where the damn money went. No. Speaking of money, let's pay the bills. Today's show is sponsored by cascartel.com, the premium spirits marketplace. You know the drill by now. We talk about them every week. You don't have to wait in line. You don't have to do a raffle. You don't have to do all that other stuff. It is a convenient play. You can get your whiskey, your liquor, whatever it is, shipped directly to your door with cascartel.com. If you get more than one item right now, you get a couple of products, use code FREESHIP2, you will get Zeke. Not only will you get free shipping, they will give you a 375 of Rebel 100, which that stuff at 20 bucks a bottle. Have you had the Rebel 100 yet? I thought we reviewed it. Did we? Maybe I had a sample that Tarek gave me, and that's where I'm confused. For 20 bucks, it's one of those things like Old Tub that everybody should just have on their shelf. I thought it was a good weeder. Wheat. There's an H in there, asshole. You're supposed to say it. Also follow Cast Cartel on Instagram. They're always doing cool giveaways for their followers. Today's show is also sponsored by PremiumBarProducts.com, a place where you can go get custom laser edge glassware, especially around the holidays. You want to tell someone you really care about them? Personalize some glassware, decanter, bar tools for them by going to premiumbarproducts.com. Zeke is dying to get Kaysen some more personalized laser edge glassware. He's got a whole list of things that he wants to uh, do for Kaysen. Geek, who is not Kaysen, by the way, is dying to give you some laser edge glassware. God only knows what Geek is going to put on a glass for Zeke, his single white male stalker, as far as we know. I don't see how you know any of these facts about this person. I've never seen a real picture. I know 100% who it is, and it's not Kaysen. You keep telling yourself that. I gave the person the picture to start the account, so I think I know who it is. <sighs> and I did not give it to Kaysen. Well, I've seen the picture that Kaysen took when there was only five people at a table. And Kaysen gave it to the person who owns the account. Sure. I'm telling you, 100%. I would not lie to you, buddy. But also, if you are a distillery, a store, or a bourbon group, and you want laser edge glassware on a wholesale level, reach out to me. I will get you in touch with the folks at premiumbarproducts.com. Use code DADS10 right now for 10% off your custom order. The Dad's Drink Bourbon Glen Karen that you can get there would not be included in the custom order. But if you customize some laser edge glassware, use code DADS10 and get 10% off your order. Well, we bullshitted way too long. Hopefully I can cut some of that down. Today we are drinking O.H. Ingram River Age Straight Whiskey. It's 46% ABV, 96 proof. It's three years old, 36% rye bourbon blended with a 95.5 rye. The final rye content is around 67%. This is aged on a barge on the Mississippi River, right where the Ohio River flows into the Mississippi in Kentucky. So basically, as soon as they get the whiskey, they go ahead and put it on the barge. And there are fluctuations. You know, the Mississippi River could fluctuate 35 feet in a year. It's going up and down. There's waves. So this is river-aged whiskey, Zeke. Up and down and up they go in. So this comes in at 80 bucks. It's available in Tennessee right now, eventually expanding. There is also a straight rye coming in November, which is right now. And down the road, they will have other old whiskeys. So this was named after the person's dad who started this. And O.H. Ingram started the Ingram Barge Company. So the whole family has experience in barges 
and then decided to get into whiskey. So they used the knowledge they have from barges and then aged the whiskey on a barge. You said this is a, a blend? Sorry. You know I'm bad with these details some days. You are Charlie Brown's mama to me. Womp, 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 womp. Yeah, like I, I caught the tail end about the rice. This is a, a bourbon and a rye blend? Yeah, so it's a 36% high rye bourbon blended with a 95.5 rye. Oh, that's interesting. I figured you would find that very interesting. No, that's why when I caught the tail end, I'm like, damn it, John started talking and I quit listening again. Why does this always happen? You shouldn't do that. We should get a poll up, though. I, I feel like this has got to be a common theme among, among listeners. I think you're just an ass. So what did you think about this whiskey, Zeke Baker? Nose-wise, I put down vanilla, caramel. I know basic kind of stuff, but it's there, solid. It was kind of rummy. It also kind of reminded me of French toast. I don't know how and why this really makes no sense to me. And maybe I just drifted off my own head. But at some point during that kind of French toast smell that I got, it was even almost like when you like you know when you batter French toast and like right before you throw it on the griddle. I kind of got like that nutmeg with a little bit of like the egg gouache on there and the, and the other stuff, you know, you the cinnamon you put out you throw it on there at once before you put the French toast in the griddle. I got all of that like a big waft, but even to a degree it was the egg wash. I don't know, it was weird. I don't remember ever picking that up on something. And what about the taste and finish? I really thought this reminded me more of a light rum than a bourbon even. Uh, again, I thought this was a bourbon going in. All, all my sample says is O.H. Ingram River aged, so I like it. It's almost like tasting blind to a degree, but that's what I thought. Next, I put this almost seems blended to me, so at least I got that side of things right. I thought it was a, a lower proof product, but... The sugar aspect of it was very noticeable. I also had a weird singe that was totally like, I don't even know if I'd call it finish. It was almost like an after effect from the finish uh, as far as like when it was perceived. But the fact the singe was there, I, I couldn't put my finger on how or why. It was just like, I taste a lot of sugars. It moves across the palate. It, it's somewhat simple in that regard. After everything was completely washed, then well, why is there a burn here? That's funny. I got a complete opposite taste profile Woo, we're back to normal we are back to normal for me this kind of goes back to blending and what we've talked about with different people that blend and talked about when we blend and when you do an infinity barrel for me the 95.5 takes over everything the nose for me was wintergreen mint it's like dentine ice gum i know i'm making your face go crazy but the 95.5 just stuck out to me like a sore thumb everything was 95.5 i said taste i feel like the 95.5 took over i don't see the bourbon coming through if i'm getting this tasting note somebody else obviously who blended this did not get this tasting note because i'd be like at this point i'm just gonna put out 95.5 rather than take the time to blend the high rye bourbon with the rye but to me the rye took this over completely I wouldn't go that far without going down the rabbit hole. I or we, by more I, have been fortunate enough to taste a lot of 95.5 lately with uh, Matt Damon, Mr. Hines, and uh, Mr. Davenport. There's a lot of hidden variances there. I, I, I no longer can classify 95.5 as 95.5. I can't do it. Um, just seen so much variance recently. But I will say kind of the thing that made sense to me out of that was that singe I get is like a, an aftershock almost kind of thing. But knowing that the 95.5 is there, that, that singe that I was getting, it was almost like an after effect. That, that makes sense to me now to a much larger degree because that would be a, a rye finishing aspect. Again, I didn't know what this was. I, I did think it was almost blended. That, at least now in my mind, that aspect of the like the finish makes sense to me. But I definitely agree with you though, that I would not have pegged this really as being a bourbon product, trying it blind or not knowing. I didn't catch as much rye aspects as you did. You know, we both have our quirks on things that just like tip our scale immediately as far as like, oh shit, I tasted this, I'm out. Yeah, I just poured another one just to make sure. And I'm just completely on that rye kick. It's what hangs you up again. I've got the things that I catch. And once I get it, uh, I just soapbox it for forever because it's all I can taste. 
I would love uh, to come back to this one at this point, but honestly, where I'm at here is honestly at this point, I'd rather get that Nashville Barrel Company blend for 65 and have it be older juice, have it be seven year old mixed with four year old at 65 rather than spend 80 for this. And I know they're trying to say that you know being on the barge and the river and, and the motion of the, the river is going to kind of keep working it through the barrel more. I don't think it tastes young by any means. I think it tastes kind of around a five-year-old MGP ride to me at 95.5. I know you won't classify things as 95.5 anymore, but you know, I, I think it punches above its weight. I think if you like that kind of stuff, it's a good whiskey. And if you like the story behind it, it's a good whiskey. I think there's comparable things to me that are much cheaper. And I would even say almost to that degree, I think they're on the right path with the blending, but I, I think they could have tinkered with that ratio a little bit more. Probably still has much sweet and the, the things that I liked about it in the front, but dialed back that 95.5 enough to where that weird singe at the back that just did. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me why it's there. It's literally an afterthought that is just like, oh, what in the hell is that? I don't like that. My other thought was simply... Yeah, the barges go up and down. There's some motion. But at least in my understanding, over the people we've talked to and try to learn things here and there, I thought it was more of a a pressure play than a movement play. And that, that's why with temperature fluctuations, the pressure and the, the, the delta inside the barrel drives the liquids in and out of the wood. And that creates the exchange and that gives the flavor, not so much just, uh, you know, going down a dirt road at 75 miles an hour and bouncing all over the damn place. Well, if you think about it, it's kind of like the gimmick behind black and whiskey where they say they're going to blare Metallica music at it. If you think about it, the best way to describe it is, you know, that scene in Jurassic Park where the T-Rex is coming and you see that water that's sitting in the car. And then all of a sudden the ripples start coming out and they start banging against the side of the glass. That's basically what they're saying here is that this is constantly going back and forth. So even if it's not working through the wood, you know, the pressure is going to get the whiskey deep into the wood. It's going to rotate. The motion is going to rotate the juice inside the barrel. So it is going to just keep exposing it to char I mean, it's basically just kind of rotating it around, making a little bit of a whirlpool and not keeping it stagnant. I mean, I guess I get that. But to me, it just seems almost like a scenic mixer or, or anything else. Even like a, like my mind, I just see a um, like a homemade bingo machine where they're just spinning it and the balls are going around and around and around. Well, I mean, they're still not necessarily picking up anything off the, the spin. It's just circulating a product. I like how you said cement mixer. Well, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> So where are you on this? 80 bucks is, is tough. You mentioned NBC's there with the small batch for folks that may not have that available uh, distribution wise, which is a, a good amount currently. My first thought was some of those um, high West products that are the blends of their own rye with 95.5. They even do finishes as well. There's a lot of options that I think when you look at the nuts and bolts of this, that come in with a more fine-tuned product at a lesser price. And if I can pay less and enjoy something more, that pretty much seals the deal for me. Shoot, Dickel Rye. Well, yeah, it's MGP. Yeah, <laughs> it's MGP, and you want to talk about something that's 95.5. The thing that I don't get is they obviously like a higher rye profile here at OH Ingram. They're coming out with a straight rye. This is skewed. This is essentially a rye whiskey because they blended a high rye bourbon with a, a rye. And at this point, why do the blend if you're coming out with a straight rye? You're very skewed towards the rye side altogether. Why not do something that's maybe 51% rye or kind of skew it in a way where you have a bourbon, you have a rye, your products are going to be too similar to each other. Hey. They didn't ask for DDB consulting. They didn't, but they like what they like, and that's fair. And if we had a whiskey company, we could put out shit we like, too. No, we wouldn't ever get shit out because we'd just sit there and disagree the whole damn time. <laughs> no, because the best thing about us is when you're on a pick with us and we both find that one we both like, we're like, all right, if we both like it, we know it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's getting to that point. 
If you have disposable income and you like the story, go ahead and buy the bottle. I'm probably going to pass on this one. I have my eyes up. I want to see what else they do up there. I'm I'm very interested. Yeah, I'm, in my mind, I still can't like piece together where that super like sweet up front kind of rum aspect came from. That's interesting to me. I mean, what they have blended is not a scrap. It just needs tweaking, I think. But it's not too far off from being a good pour. 80 bucks still kind of tough, but... At least on the blending side, for an initial offering, I, I don't think they're too far off of getting to where you'd want to be. You know what I mean? I agree. I agree. Thank you very much to OH Ingram for sending us a sample of this. They were the ones who sent us the bottle. By no means does that have anything to do with how we gave a review today. We are always open and honest in our reviews. Find us on Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dad's. Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Find us wherever you download your podcast. Chances are you already have because you're listening to us right now. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? Good old Music City, USA. And uh, again, happy Turkey Day. Gobble, gobble. Everybody uh, eat too much. Don't drink too much. Enjoy. Have a good time. Happy Thanksgiving. Cheers. Ciao.